Hey everyone, it's Ethan with a few words from our sponsors. We're very excited to have Lego, yes, the Lego, sponsoring our show today. We love building Legos and they sent us their new Lego Technics series to play around with. It's real life advanced building, some with working gears and real electric motors. Technic is made for the engineers and STEAM students. From sports cars to hydraulic movers, if you build for power and speed, then visit lego.com slash technic to find your next Technic build. That's lego.com slash technic, T-E-C-H-N-I-C. I think I'm spelling right. Lego, Technic, build for real. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus again today. I am Trace and I'm here with Dr. Mike from CASIS yet again, the Center for the Advancement of Science and Space. So we're gonna continue our conversation from the last couple of weeks. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so we just sent uh, pretty recently an AI machine, like a floating basketball sized machine to the space station called Simon. Um, can you talk a little bit about one, I guess, why we did it, and two, what Simon is supposed to learn. Simon, by the way, stands for Crew Interactive Mobile Companion. Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, Simon's very interesting. So there have been applications of artificial intelligence on board the International Space Station and in spacecraft before, but we're starting to learn more and more about the real value of artificial intelligence in helping us with simple tasks like logistics, keeping track of stuff where it is and actually using more of, of enhanced reality type devices so that crew members don't have to train for everything on the ground. They can actually learn as they go. Uh, one of the uh, new advancements in that are, are artificial intelligence devices that actually interact with the crew. So Simon is gonna be one of the first tests of this. He's simply, uh, essentially gonna be a little bit like Siri, mm -hmm. uh, grown a little bit larger. and. One of the advantages, again, of being in that microgravity environment is that you don't have to ha hold hands or, or keep Simon in your hand. Simon's gonna be able to float around and act with things. So there are other devices on board the International Space Station, such as spheres, um, which are essentially about the size of soccer balls, which have been up there for over 10 years now. And they're small artificial satellites. And since they're in microgravity environment, they float around, they have little CO2 canisters that enable them to jet around and move around like little satellites. So one of the exciting things we're going to learn about Simon is how to incorporate what Simon is able to do into mobile devices like that. So eventually, instead of Simon just hanging over a crew person's shoulder and answering questions from them, Simon may be able to float around independently and do tasks. Simon or the offspring of Simon will be able to actually independently and automated walk up and ask you, you know, can I help you? Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? Wow. So it's a, a very exciting area of, uh, uh, of adventure. And we're looking at it, especially from the research and technology development angle. There's a lot that AI can do for us up there. Yeah. I think it's neat to think of, about astronauts having that same kind of, did I remember to do that thing earlier today? Kind of same problems that we all have here mm -hmm. on the ground. You know, it's just that Simon could be like, hey, Simon, did we do this task earlier? And Simon can say, yes, you know, this astronaut did this task at about this time or That's something right. like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, we, we live in a uh, time today when our refrigerators are keeping track of our <laughs> shopping list and yeah. letting us know what we're low on. And, you know, we need the same capabilities in space for all the tasks that are going on there. And, in addition to being able to provide insight into what you're doing and how you're doing it, they're able to look at correlations of, of actually process data in ways that we don't. So there's going to be very valuable uh, benefits of developing that AI in the space environment for the research and technology development environment as well. Today's show is sponsored by WGU, an online university that's changing higher education. Its innovative competency-based learning model was designed specifically to fit in the lives of busy adults like me. <laughs> I'm not busy. WGU is nonprofit and surprisingly affordable, offering bachelor's and master's degrees in business, IT, and healthcare. WGU works with industry experts to make sure their degrees are current and relevant, so you'll get the skills and credentials that employers are seeking. Many industry certifications are included in their IT degree programs at no extra cost. And if you already have the certifications, they can transfer so you finish faster. It's also about half the cost of most other online universities. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash seeker. That's wgu.edu slash seeker to learn more and get your $65 application fee waived. wgu.edu slash seeker. So we put a lot of premium on experiments in the space environment that are automated and don't have to have a lot of crew interaction. And advancements in AI like Simon are going to lead to more and more automation so that 
the experiments are conducted by devices rather than by actual crew members at the time. Hmm. So tell me one more thing about spheres. Are you saying that there's just like little soccer balls jetting around up there? There are at times. We use huh. them for STEM education programs. So there are uh, programs where high school and, and middle school students in the past were able to write programs to address challenges. So similar to some of the robotics challenges that are here on Earth, they had to design uh, um, algorithms for the robots to be able to navigate three-dimensional courses and complete tasks. So yeah. you would have two crew members um, watching two different spheres robots move around using code that was provided by high school students or middle school, middle school students here on the ground. That's so cool. And spheres has been around for a while. It was a program developed out of MIT, uh, but there's a new program coming on from Astro B that's local. It's going to be coming out of, out of Ames Research Center and several partnerships there. And uh, rather than being round uh, soccer balls, they're now cube shaped. Uh, so they're going to look and have even more functionality, even They'll have the quality of a cell phone camera to take really high resolution imagery inside the station and through the cupola. Hmm. Maybe Astro B will want to sit in the cupola too and look back at Earth and take pictures. Yeah, that's so neat. Um, what is it that uh, could make the ISS kind of even better for the future? I mean, if we're thinking about the future of the ISS currently, we've got, what, six or seven years left in its current mission. But if we want to like look to that and then in beyond, what, what could make the ISS better moving forward? Well, first and foremost, it's, it's bringing people's ideas to the station. So the International Space Station um, was conceived a long, long time ago in a galaxy not so far away, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, the opportunities there in the original concept of building the International Space Station were to build an environment where humans could work and live and to make that uh, an international operating environment so that crews from different nations could, could live and work in that environment and conduct research and technology development activities. Over time, it's evolved. So now that it's fully assembled and it is fully functional and operating as a research laboratory, time has moved on. So there are advances in, in high throughput robotic systems that weren't installed in the original uh, International Space Station. So. Folks who were thinking about designing environments and laboratories to do research, I think would approach the design of the International Space Station from a completely different perspective. So there are opportunities for companies now to bring new modules up that may have some of those innovative new platforms for conducting R&D activities. And part of our mission at CASIS is helping to enable the commercialization of that environment. So. We're looking for anyone out there who has ideas about ways to improve the capabilities of living and operating and conducting research in that space. We're looking for folks who are thinking about ways to utilize the unique features of that environment in order to further their own research goals and directives. So most importantly is to keep engaging people's imaginations and to thinking about space as a, as a working environment where they can take their products, where they can test their ideas, where they can innovate. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us here on Seeker Plus. I appreciate the time. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to our sponsor, WGU, the online university that's affordable, innovative, and changing lives by changing higher education. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash seeker. Thank you guys for watching Seeker Plus today. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes in this series and also the next series that's going to come out. And again, thank you. We'll see you next time.